Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you are all doing well, and welcome back to Chelsea News, the series where I go through all the headlines and news regarding Chelsea Football Club, pick some good stuff out, or whatever is there, consolidate it, and present it to you here in this content in this video on this channel anyway how you're doing i hope you're right i hope you're staying safe at home and clean hanging out with your families self-isolating and i want to say a big thank you to all of you who's donated to my nhs fundraiser it's going really really well you have the opportunity to win a chelsea shirt if you want to do something good and helpful for the nhs please consider donating link in the top of the description and i'll pick someone out at random who offers their twitter handle in the message you could win a Chelsea shirt. We all like Chelsea shirts, but more importantly, we all like giving and supporting the NHS, right? All right, let's get into it. All right, there's a lot to crack into today. I've picked out a few things that I want to speak to you guys about, and a couple of them are frustrating and recurring themes, but there is an interesting one in there that I would probably like to see happen. But I'm going to be talking about Donnarumma, what Tuto Sport have been saying in Italy about him potentially going to Chelsea. There's an update there. I want to talk about the Jude Bellingham race. My Chelsea are even entering said race. It makes no sense for the Blues. I want to talk about a certain striker in league. Uh, that Chelsea have been linked with going into battle with Leeds trying to secure the signature of the player and I actually think he looks like he might fit the bill in terms of price and what he could deliver. Interesting. And finally I want to comment on the recent headlines about Jadon Sancho's wages or what Manchester United would potentially offer him and why that could actually blow Chelsea out of the water like I predicted months ago. Mm? Alright, let's start with Gialuigi Donnarumma, the Italian young goalkeeper who is still <laughs> very young, over 190 appearances for Milan, really, really big, talented goalkeeper. I get why he'd be a target if Chelsea did want to replace Kepa Arifa Balaga, and that was it. They're like, well, we're done, we're going to get someone else, Lampard wants someone else, he doesn't trust him, fine. Move on, Donnarumma looks good, right? Now, Tuto Sport in Italy are reporting that Chelsea have tabled a five-year contract for Donnarumma. Again, this is not what I'm saying, Tuto Sport saying this. A five-year deal worth eight million euros a year. Okay, fine. And perhaps it's gonna... <laughs> right. Okay. This is where it gets ridiculous. Chelsea have apparently offered 60 million euros. Fine. Okay. Apparently he's only got one year left on his deal or something. I, even though the market's gone crazy, I get it. But Tuto Sport, or certainly the translation of the article, have said that Chelsea are gonna pay for that, give him that money, to pay for Donnarumma. <laughs> and also, Kepa Ruta Balaga going the other way. Now, this article was a little bit loose. I'm gonna just assume, I'm going to assume, that it means a loan. So they buy Donnarumma, and they don't leave Milan in a tight spot because they lend them a reason Balaga, right? That makes sense. They didn't say loan, or the article I read didn't say loan, which makes you think, what? An 80 million euro goalkeeper in Kepa for a one, <laughs> a goalkeeper with one year left in his contract plus 60 million euros. No thanks, mate. So I'm gonna, you know, pause on this. I just reported the like news story to you guys, but it must be a loan. And maybe if it's a loan, that could kind of make sense because if Kepa does really well over in Italy, who knows? He could regain some value, and then Chelsea could regain money. Still, if you're watching this and you think, oh, Jan wants to sell Kepa, incorrect, my friend. I'm just reporting on the news I've read this morning. I'm very much on a fence. This is me on a fence right now regarding Kepa. So watch this space. I'm more than sure Chelsea have already approached the experienced sandwich eater, Mina Royola, and would look to do business potentially. Read with me this, guys. Why the hell are Chelsea in the race for Jude Bellingham? Yes, Dortmund want him. Yes, Manchester United want him. Everyone wants him. Great, I can see why. He's got like over 2,100 minutes in the championship, a very physical, demanding league, and he's just 16 years old. Little kid playing every single game in the championship. Impressive. And more than that, he's got six goal involvements from midfield, central midfield. Decent, it's decent, he's 16 years old. What, 30 million pounds, why are Chelsea in for him? Why are Chelsea in for him? Why are we in for him? That's 30 million pounds that could be spent so much better elsewhere, right? Okay. If you haven't realized, Chelsea have a whole conveyor belt of talented central midfielder wonder kids. Chelsea have loads. They have loads. They don't need to spend 30 million pounds on a 16-year-old central midfielder who's pretty good. 
They just don't. Let them go to Dortmund. That's what they. That's what these players do. They go to Dortmund. We'll buy them in a couple of years for 100 million. <laughs> you see what I mean, though? It's just, to me, it makes no sense. Why? 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 Just I, I keep seeing it. Obviously, this news has been reported for a while. The Jude Bellingham Chelsea links. I deliberately tried to steer clear of it because I was like, Chelsea do not need that. Sometimes I report on even weaker links, just telling you what's happening in the headlines because it's a position Chelsea actually need. Jude Bellingham to Chelsea. The news articles won't go away, but I personally hope they do go away. Right, let's talk about the exciting part of this video, uh, striker. Strikers are exciting, right? Goals win games, goals are fun. Chelsea are linked with a new striker. <laughs> Habib Diallo, or Diallo, Diallo, whatever, the striker who plays for Mets, 24 year old, playing in Ligue 1 over in France's top flight. Now, apparently Leeds are also in for this striker, which would not surprised me one bit because Patrick Bamford has been misfiring for them loads. They create so many chances that lead side under Bielsa and they I think they're all completely frustrated with Bamford just tripping over his feet in the final third so you'd understand why they'd want to get Habib over in Leeds and the price tag looks affordable for a club like Leeds. It's 20 million euros so what's that like 17 million pounds or something but Chelsea have entered the race to sign the striker. Obviously at Chelsea he'd be a backup striker. He wouldn't be, he would literally be a backup. This is the kind of caliber of striker that wouldn't, you know, immediately displace Tammy Abraham unless he came in and just started scoring loads of goals when given chances starting for Chelsea under Lampard. But he looks decent. Very, very reasonable fee, say 17 million pounds. If it goes up to 20 million, fine to win the race against Leeds uh, to buy him off Mets in France. Right, and I think about this as well. Mets are in like 15th or something in League 1. Uh. So they're doing really, really quite poorly. I mean, I don't really know if by their standards, but in, you know, the fifth strongest league, they're quite low down. So you'd imagine the quality of Mets isn't very good. But he himself has scored 12 league goals and got three assists. So the guy scoring goals, he's 24 years old. He knows how to score goals in a relatively competitive league. And he's over 6'1 and is very good in the air. I looked this up. He wins over 4.3 aerial duels per game. That's good. That's important. You want a striker that's good in the air to do knockdowns, win aerial duels, all this kind of gear. Now, remember, Chelsea are going to buy a striker. Hell, they might buy two strikers. They might say they buy a striker for like 30 million pounds. This could be another striker for like 17 million pounds. He might just be interested in the move for that Chelsea wages and also change of lifestyle. Personally, I like it. I've just looked at the numbers so far, so you can roast me in the comments if you want, if you've watched this guy play loads in Liga. But in terms of looking at the numbers, the rumored price tag, the kind of profile of striker, I kind of like it. I like it. So we'll see what happens if the deals or if the story heats up anymore. I'll let you guys know on Football Therapy, of course, be sure to swing by every day as I give you the news. Finally, I did want to talk about this recent news story about Jade and Sancho. Shock horror, Sancho back in a video. Now, this news headline is basically saying Man United kind of blow everyone else out of the water. And this doesn't surprise me by offering large amounts of wages. I've said it once, I've said it before, Manchester United are probably the biggest money-making football entity in the world. Maybe even sports entity, I'm not sure. I'll have to look that up. But the fact being, they don't really, they won't suffer for with any financial fair play issues because they generate so much commercial revenue. They wouldn't have the same investigations, say, Manchester City are having by UEFA. Because Man United could just look, present their books and be like, we're making so much money all the time. I think they're like the only club in world football that could afford an 100 million transfer every transfer window or something like that, I've, I read. So they've got the money, basically. So off the bat, they could afford the 130 million, 120 million transfer fee for Jadon Sancho already out. That's a, an incredible amount of money. And then apparently they're prepared to offer the just turned 20 year old 400,000 pounds a week. 400K a week. Now, I know it was disproven and Tammy Abraham came out and said the stories were fake about him demanding 180k, less than half, which apparently weren't true anyway. Apparently Sancho would theoretically, if this new story is to be believed, be given 400k a week. Now, ask yourself this, Jaden Sancho, super fans who would do anything to see him at the club, 
Would you let? Would you want Chelsea Football Club to spend 120, 130 million pounds on this player who's had a good, you know, couple of seasons or season and a half, and then pay him 400k a week? Manchester United's financial muscle might just blow Chelsea out of the water in this one, and perhaps it's not a bad thing. Chelsea can spend a bit more money on a striker, bring in Jeremy Boga, and you know, look to strengthen all around the pitch, not just up the front line. So we'll see what happens with that. Anyway, what do you guys think? Get down in the comments section below, express your thoughts and opinions on everything I've discussed in this video. And if you've enjoyed the content, I'd urge you to please like the video, that helps me out a lot. Subscribe. If you are new to the channel and you are welcome to follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. And remember, if you want to do something good, consider donating to my NHS fundraiser. Link in the top of the description. And if you choose to do so, put your Twitter handle in the message when you donate and you could uh, win a Chelsea shirt. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the football that's not happening and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby